The following is a presentation of the St. Louis Chess Club. The clocks have started and the excitement is palpable at the 2024 FIDE Candidates Tournament in Toronto, Canada. Years of training and focus made them candidates. Now their arduous crucible to become the world champions challenger is just beginning. All lies were on the top seeded matchup between world's number two Fabiano Caruana and reigning Fisher random world champion Hikaru Nakamura with the two compatriots ending their first bout in a fighting draw. In fact, it was draws across the boards with the only decisive result being a win for Tan Zong Yi with the black pieces in the women's section. One round down, but we're a long way to go from hearing the final bell. Day two of the 2024 FIDE candidates, coming up next. Toronto for round two of the FIDE candidates. We kicked off the tournament with some exciting games yesterday, but the tournament is long and we are here for every moment of it. Let's go back to the studio and start the day. A quiet start on the first day of the candidates, but they can all change today. Day two from Toronto starts right now. Hello and welcome everyone. I'm your host Nazi Paikidze and I'm here with Grandmasters Yasser Sarawan and Evgeny Miroshenko. Nazi, Miro. <laughs> Let's just jump right into it, boy, because we've got so much to talk about. Uh, the first day, quiet affair, players getting settled in very quickly. Let's take a look at the standings. What happened in round one in the open? In the open, we had four draws, so as you can see, everybody shared in the first place. Absolutely, and for the ladies. For the ladies, we do have a sole leader, Tan Zonggi, who won uh, her first game yesterday, and all the rest games were drawn. And wow, let's just jump right into it, Miro, because I got to tell you some really big breaking news, and most especially of the game of Hikaru. Absolutely. Wow. Well, that's the position on the board that we have. You don't have to be a grandmaster to tell that something went terribly wrong for White. Right. Right. The king's on E1. <laughs> this is undeveloped. Right. So you would expect beginner to play like that. Uh, well, it wasn't really the beginner's mistake, but something really went wrong for Hikaru and computer confirms by the looks of it, we would conclude black is better. Computer confirms black is completely winning. There is not a single chance. So I don't know if I should add much to it, but yeah, well, uh, last move being a capture on E3 with the bishop, knight E3 was a little bit better, but makes no difference. With material be being equal, mm -hmm. computer says minus seven. So mm -hmm. black is almost like a rook up and something else. So no right. chance for Hikaru, regrettably so. Not to make too light of uh, white's position, if you told me this was the bomb cloud opening, I wouldn't disagree. I mean, yeah, well, it's a terrible <laughs> 20 moves uh, that we were so seeing. The here. only information I can give you for now that White did castle in this game. He just had to go back to E1 and Rook had to go to H1, exactly. which you wouldn't guess. And that's not our only result either. Absolutely. Or, uh, we also, in the ladies, we have uh, we saw a victory. Yes, Tan Zhonggi increases, extends her lead pretty much. Uh, well, I think I will not show much, but the deserve well the end of this game deserves to be mm. shown. So in this position, White jumped knight to f6. Uh, knight to I think f6. It was black uh, to move right yeah. now. E5, mm -hmm. yes, knight to f6. Double exclamation mark, sacrificing the knight. And after this capture, and capture was forced because h7 was hanging, knight to g6, Oof. and it turns out. White collects all the material you can't take because the pawn is pinned. The king doesn't really matter where it goes. It has to go on the g-file under the scope of this rook on g2. So say king to g8, knight would take on e7, rook check. takes on e7, discover check, and then the rook is gone and the game is gone. So wow. two out of two is the perfect start for Tan Gi, and well, the other ladies have to try to catch up. 
perfect start. Uh, let's see the results so far for the ladies, uh, Nasi. We already have three results. So as we already mentioned, Tan Zongi defeated Vaishali. Right. And two other games, Lahno against Conero ended in a draw, and Selimova Tingji also ended in a draw. In the remaining games, uh, uh, Gorichi. <laughs> versus Anna. That is actually a huge, huge matchup. And uh, wow, uh, I'm just seeing the game of uh, Hikaru again. And Hikaru somehow, he's, well, uh, it, it's terrible. It, it, it's gone. It's gone. He just played the queen takes. Do you think E2. this happened because he took some big risk early in the game? Let's just take a quick gander at what happened because it really went wrong early. And uh, strangely enough, right here, this is all very, very normal. Uh, we have seen, I don't know, dozens of games with rookie one and knight g6. And I'm sure white is also essay knight d2 as well as knight a3. Hikaru thought, you know what? I'm going to trade and I'm going to take this pawn. Uh, yes, I understand you can play bishop takes h3. And he probably thought, okay, but I'm trading off a flank pawn. For the center. For the center pawn, this should be good for me. It was an error in judgment. In this moment, he did play the move knight c4. He did have an opportunity here of capturing, and I'm sure he saw the move queen b8 which is actually a kind of a nifty move, not queen d6. Queen uh, b8, bishop f4, bishop c7, got himself to somewhere around these parts and said, you know what, I'm not better. I'm just not better. I might even be a tad worse. My king is a little bit more exposed. So he didn't like this. He went knight c4, not realizing that the missing h-pawn is actually huge and these these moves all came with tempo, and again, I think this whole idea of bishop takes h7 check was simply terribly misguided. Amiro, jump in on this, because we actually saw this moment, and then we go to ourselves, okay, so then what are you going to play? Bishop had to come back because g7, g6 is on black's agenda. So to d3? B5 and I'm trying to, you know, yes, I'm trying to... Imagine uh, what he missed. Like, find the moment, the last moment where he, where he was okay, or okay-ish. Because mm. it turns out, yes, as you absolutely spot-on pointed, that knight c4, already a beginning of, if not a downfall, but, you know, we, we are no longer talking white's opening advantage after knight c4, but it's black who has the initiative. And right. interestingly, uh, before the before the start of the show, we were discussing, and it's counterintuitive, the fact that White having you know the central pawn get kind of more centralized, mm -hmm. but because of the weakened king, yes. Black always finds some resources. Uh, so Bishop G4, Queen to C2, E5. Here, reportedly Knight to D5 was even stronger. So after Knight D7. Maybe it was the last moment Hikaru was okay, and bishop h7 is the right move. When he really made a mistake was playing bishop back d3. to back to d3. So according to, once again, to the computer, queen to e4 Whoa. would have kind of kept better chances, but I'm not sure if really, because right, f5, f5 and, you know, computer insists on entering some crazy complications. Sacrificing the bishop for now, Black takes with the bishop, then it's a check on h4. And the material is white has a couple of pawns, black has a piece. So if there is no threat for white, black will be winning. But white kind of gets some initiative. Bishop so it's G5. bishop to g5 with the tempo, now knight on d7 is attacked. Right. And you are not very comfortable defending this knight because rook f7 runs into some knight, knight d6. So. Well, black, according to the machine once again, black is better in this line. Knight, no, knight f7, seven. I thought knight f7 is terribly bad. No, you actually take here. f5. Because f5, the bishop on f5 is hanging. Nice. But once again, how do you navigate it during no, the game? Even with the help of computer, it's, it's not that easy. Once you see f5, Nasi, you just shut it down because Absolutely. you're thinking the bishop is lost. <laughs> you're just losing a piece. Yeah, you don't go further than queen h4. So you think that yeah. that was the last mm -hmm. moment well, bishop d3 was bad. 
I'd say I don't think it's computers in your okay. opinion. So bishop to d3, knight to e5, bishop e2, f5. I must say right here, that too isn't completely obvious move, f7, f5. But as we discovered as we were coming on the air and analyzing this uh, here in studio, it really is a fantastic move. It, yes, and it, black's play just seems easier here. Right. All moves come naturally. Exactly, and everything is going uphill, so mm -hmm. to speak. So the move f7, f5, not only does it defend the bishop, but it also intimates, hey, give me a chance, I can play f5, f4. My rook's in the game, but what it's really all about is getting the queen to h4. As soon as you get your queen to h4, this is just completely over. I think over. that explains why Hikaru played f4 to at least block one bishop. Right. But uh, according to the engine, f4 was a final mistake, because after that, it well, looked like it was minus seven. Yeah, it was this very nice follow-up too. Bishop b6, you want my knight? You could take the knight. I think we actually saw that in, in, in coming up. But takes knight e d5, queen g5, f4, black's winning back. Uh, the piece with interest, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Rook h1 check, king overtakes, queen g5. And I didn't even know how Hikaru was going to uh, play the next few moves. He did actually find something. King e1 takes, queen takes g4. Mira, were you saying that even here there was uh, even something stronger than queen takes g4? Oh, good like enough for sure. Every move is good here for Every Black. move is good, but good enough. And our current position is check, and I Yes, you know, uh, Hikaru is thinking about what could, what, what, what all went wrong. This is just right. So queen g three, disaster. king d two. That's that's, that's, actually that's the position. Last right. move. Well, interestingly, you would expect when the evaluation is plus six, plus seven, or in human terms, black is completely winning yes. with white king being on d two and you know pieces being undeveloped. You would expect some forced lines, right? But surprisingly, like one of the lines, but black is indeed winning, winning and so on, but one of the lines is like rook f to e8. Uh, <laughs> that just kind of showcasing how miserable white's position uh. is because, well, the only quote unquote developing move is knight from b1 to a3, which right. doesn't really help you much. It's not inspiring. <laughs> right. Yeah. And rook e8, yeah, it's a modest move, but. The moment you take on e5, you like everything collapses. Yeah. yeah, and this is once again, it's not that hard of a move to find. And if you don't, you can go rook a d8. It's, yeah. just, it's just winning. It's Nothing. you know, it, it, it's time a factor, by the way, because uh, along with his other woes. Not really. So Vidit has 23 minutes on the clock. He carves down to nine minutes, but I think Vidit could nine. win this game with just couple of minutes on the clock. Yeah, just he, he doesn't. But know. I am hearing some breaking news that Nepo suddenly is completely winning against Firusha. So wow. let's check oh, yeah. out that game. So again, a tepid start in round one as the players kind of got comfy uh, settling in for what will be a marathon event. Suddenly, poof, we've got results. And uh, again, Hikaru suffering. But you were saying Jan. Uh, Whoa, 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 whoa. I remember earlier we were discussing <laughs> that. This, uh, this isn't recognizable. Like white. Um, right. This is not the position I was recognizing. When we have left, uh, oh, pardon me, when we were coming on air, we more or less had left this position with, with Queen D7. Mm -hmm. And uh, to be uh, honest, it just, just felt like it's a, it's a bit of a mess. The position, the engines kind of called it balanced. Uh, I called it chaotic. Uh, knight g3, knight takes f3. Well, obviously, Ali Reza had planned this. Somehow, I'm not joking, everybody, but this knight on f3, seriously, it's not a joke, it was on b6. <laughs> it's hard to believe. <laughs> <laughs> How it teleported uh, the, the actual maneuver was knight c8 to d6 to f5 to h4 to f3. It, well, I, I admire winning a pawn. <laughs> <laughs> All that effort just to yes. win a pawn. <laughs> and black wins a pawn. B5, F4, Knight E4. These are all new moves for us. Bishop E6. Here's a very strange move, Ooh. Queen G6. Was that a sacrifice? Well, it has to be. It cannot be a blunder, Sure, right? sure. So. Um, 
So from a material perspective, well, obviously black has some extra pawns, but when you start to imagine this bishop is actually, okay, we take off queens, this bishop on b2 could actually be, well, can check checkmate, the team, yeah. you know, and that tells me that I think I'd rather be white here at this moment, but queen g6, like you said, is this a sacrifice? He, he took it. And he took. I'm not sure what Black's threat is, though. Th besides Queen H1, one check. Right. What the else one, is there? Yeah, the one check threat. So that begs the question, while you're not making any threats, maybe I should be making threats. Maybe I should be the one playing C4. Maybe I should be playing Rook D7. Miro, it looks great. We have breaking news. Breaking news, yeah, I'm speechless, but it says Vidit Santos Gujarati has won the game against Nakamura with black in 29 moves. And one would argue Nakamura, well, at the very end was holding for quite a long, yeah, the position yeah. looked terrible. So just quickly, last few moves, right? So right. we said this was the position and Rook A to D8 check, King to C1, Queen G5. Yeah, the, the battery, you know, threatening all sorts of discovered checks. Nasty. B3 to make move here, move. and then knight f1, and knight goes to g3, the very next move. So Four king. Black wins more material, the king is unsafe, the piece is undeveloped, and here Naka decided he had enough. One of the earliest knockouts in the candidates. Uh, and I'm it's a painful sure loss, yes, yeah, so with the white pieces. Yeah. Oh, no question about it. Uh, any loss in a candidate is painful, but especially with the white piece in this, especially early uh, as well. Um, and just refresh us, results for the men. We only have one result so far. Hikaru Nakamura lost to Vidit. All three games in progress. Exactly, and our congratulations to Vidit, who, at Thanks. least for that brief <laughs> moment, is in clear first. It's always a good feeling to be in the in the dugout. Uh, but as you were first. saying, uh, it's always uh, tough to lose a game in the candidates, but yes. maybe it's better to lose early because he mm -hmm. still has so many games to recover and come back. Yeah, well, <laughs> putting uh, <laughs> putting he something nice on that one. Forget uh, this game. Uh, as decisive a game as that was, uh, let's just jump back to our game with, between Jan and uh, Ali Reza because you were making a very, very good point. Uh, their uh, Nasi, and that is, like, you're not really terrified. That check doesn't frighten anybody. Yes, I have a theory. Yes. He was planning to take on e4. It's so queen to g6, queen e7, queen takes e4. That was his plan. Should Makes a fun? very... There is no, there is a better move for white. <laughs> queen g7 checkmate. <laughs> right. It's I mean, one. sometimes the explanation is as simple as people miss silly stuff. It, it, and in a, in, a, in a certain way, it is silly to have the pawn on h6, right? That suddenly it is mate in one. So he took the pawn and, uh, well, Nasi was saying, like, just a second. I, I mean, you have no threats and it's sort of like, I should, I should be opening up this bishop. Bishop c4 has my attention. The one thing I regret is I can't play bishop G4, knight h2 would be embarrassing. <laughs> Sorry, Nancy, Actually, jump at one in. point, I was just thinking about Please. rook d7 that you were suggesting. Unfortunately, yeah. that move is another blunder because black has rook a to e8 and takes back the piece on e6. Rats, the whole, the whole s s concept but of all... queen takes h7 just doesn't work. Mm -hmm. This all looks white really... has to do is just move the bishop. Yeah, yeah this looks really good for Jan. Uh, tell us uh, about Bobby's. Game. Well, How is Fabi's Fabi game? Yeah, let me see. Fabi against Abbasov. I think that's yeah, that's the current position now. Fabi at some point felt like he had quite a serious advantage. Right. He remains with some, but well, Abbasov kind of fights back. So well, we mm. will have to later on check on what has happened. Anyway, so Fabi's got a passed pawn on a5, which right. is a good thing. Right, he's got a pass pawn on e5, it's not going anywhere, but <laughs> potentially, you know, the c5 pawn, one would argue, is weak. Vulnerable, yeah. Right, but black somehow managed to 
yeah, thanks to his last move g5, he starts some counterplay on the king side, right? And the rook on f4 is uncomfortable. If you move it to f3, you lose the c4 pawn. Okay. So Fabi has to be inventive with some moves like queen g3 for the moment, pinning the g pawn. And then, uh, well, computer suggests some, some tactical operation starting with rook to b8. Black can go king h8 simply, but then white is better, according to machine. So rook b8 is the critical line. Mm -hmm. Rook to b8, now black is threatening to take on b3, and when the queen takes back, the rook will be hanging, there will be no pin. And the tactical sequence I'm talking about starts with knight takes c5, which exactly. I believe would be Fabi's intention, right. so he should be ready for this. And okay. the line goes, takes on c5, takes on g5, it's very dangerous, like optically I would be super Still. scared, <laughs> right? But king, G8, uh, king h8, computer suggests a check, king to g8 and rook f3, you would think you are winning because of rook g3 threats, and you would be if not for f4. Only move. So f4 only move, but, wow. but sufficient. But sufficient. F4. And look, the line goes, queen takes and black plays a defensive move. Even computer is not, sh uh, not sure yet which one. It's rook f8 or queen e7. All I'm saying, like say we go queen f8 and everything's getting traded. Computer favors white because many pawns for the bishop, but, but in reality, I don't think white wins this. Not at all. Right. Like, no. no dangerous enough pawns, right? So there, there is no like a set of two connected past pawns and so right. on. So it will be one of those end games where well, you're constantly better till the end of the game, but you practically can't win. All right. Well, thank you, Miro, for that. Uh, eventful games going on in Actually, today's round. Actually, there's one round. more update. Uh, in the ladies, that? all the games are finished. Right. Karyachkina but, um, won her game. Against whoa, Anna whoa. The game that seemed pretty equal most of the game. So oh. something happened in the end. Maybe Anna was in time trouble. Okay, let me just bring that uh, game up for us. Just a second. So yes. now Karyachkina is plus one, but she's not a leader because Tan Shongi has plus two. Yes, uh, exactly. A perfect start. Wow. So here, when we left it, oof, actually, we, we did this kind of, some games just kind of get away from you. We left it and this was this uh, exchange slav with an e4 pawn sacrifice. And we weren't sure how good was the slight squared bishop. Bishop e2, okay. So black should be okay. happy. Right. Uh, but white has a lot of play. Look at that last move, rook c6. King f7, rook... It's like white's oh, having more fun. Wait she a lost minute. a piece on e7. So if I may, rook yes, to b7 and then... Yeah, rook to b7 and rook to d7 were two back-to-back -back mistakes. So here... So, rook well, rook h to d8, white would have been better, but not much. Okay. And then, yeah... Well, rook b7, knight c8, rook d7, rook c7, it's resigns, according to machine. Oh, it just... Uh, it's yeah, plus what? Let, let and now knight you. takes e7. Plus so, three, you can't really defend it, yeah. Somehow this bishop to g5 uh, skewer just uh, ev evaded uh, Anna and suddenly... A win. Wow. Once again, uh, big results in the ladies section. Uh, go ahead, take it away, uh, Nancy. We have Tan Songi with two out of two, perfect score, but right. closely following Alexandra Garyachkina with one and a half. And then three ladies with 50%, Koneru, Lachno, and Selimova. All making draws. They're saying, hey, we're, 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 we're solid and good. What's happening with the rest of the field? Yeah. And there you have it, uh, three ladies with minus. Wow, okay, and uh, back to the open section. That does it for uh, the ladies for today. Uh, what's happening in Jan's game? Yeah, um, so here? back to Nepo and Firuja. Queen h6, we said, and yeah, you're right, and just wanted to add, so once again, we were speculating if Firuja's queen to g6, right, this one, if it was, if it was a blunder or... Right. Well, he calculated something, but didn't calculate long enough. Uh, well, it turns out in this position, 
White has not the only move, but the only piece that you have to make a move with. <laughs> the light square bishop has to move indeed. You were spot on identifying it. Again, according to the machine, bishop to d5 was somewhat better than what he has done. Nepo went for bishop f7, after which it's a check, king e2, queen to f5, double attack on the knight and the bishop, but bishop d5 is still keeps everything. close to winning, yeah, yeah, probably winning, you would say, yeah. It keeps everything uh, Bishop e4, and uh, you can't really, can't really attack the king. I it's think it's also mm. because white can force the queen trade on the next move with queen e6. And if queens come off, then black definitely doesn't have any composition. Right, but you know what, like I'm, I'm looking at this king on e2 and black's on h8. Bishop d5. And at some point I'm thinking, do I really have to trade queens? Because mm -hmm. like ideas of c4 opening the bishop or just going rook h1 and looking at h7 pawn. Right. Become, yeah, become also appealing. But yeah, but you're right. After say g4, the best move for white is indeed to go queen e6. Who needs engine when you have Nazi <laughs> in the studio? Queen e6 is the best move, and yes, indeed, white is winning. So bishop to d5, okay, if I'm, ah, that's the problem. I, I was about to pontificate on the move c7, c6. I would want to drive this bishop away and more or less invite you to play king takes when I've got a G, so I was looking at C6 and then I stop mid-sentence because I saw Knight D6. Nice oh, in between moves. It's sort of like, ouch. Uh, I also want to point out that Please. Firuja has one minute and still has to make seven moves and he has no increment. There's no 30 second increment right. until move 40. Move 41. Uh, move 40, yes, until they, they make time control. And again, this, uh, this is Miro also you experience factor because the, pl the young players of today have been raised on increments. Not only that, but Firuja, I'm almost sure he never played the tournament kind of a long game format without an increment. Right. So the others, you would but, say they have much more experience with an increment. Firuja, I don't think he ever played not having this 30 seconds after you make a move. By it's the way, uh, to interrupt you, 24 seconds and counting before he played rook to e8. e8. <gasps> so, so not only his so long time, his position is so difficult to play because it's completely lost. <laughs> <laughs> right, let, let me find that, out what that's the move is. Putting it com completely well, lost. white is limited to only move. It's a pleasant move to make though. Queen, Queen takes, takes c7. c7. Right. I was about to say that it's strange that this construction with the king on e2, you would think that there's something vulnerable about the, the king, but when you look at the white pieces, the bishop on d5, the knight on e4, clogging up the center. e5 pawn is actually not helping Black's Absolutely. cause. And uh, by the way, it's not that I'm so greedy as to take the knight, but it is nonetheless hanging. This looks terrible. It's uh, almost over. Uh, the knight on a5 is hanging, the knight on f3 is hanging. And he just played queen to g4, Firuja right. being on his kind of last seconds. Okay. So now, uh, well, it seems a few moves lead to a victory, but the most kind of the most spectacular one as well, and the strongest one it would be to go king d3. Exactly. <laughs> king d3 and say, you do not have attack, dear sir. And um, by the way, I do think that uh, Nepo responded very, very quickly. Do you know what move he played? I saw uh, him. He played queen takes c7, and after queen g4, he's still thinking. Okay, he's still thinking up to queen g4. Yeah, no, king d3, it, it, you're kind of right in one way, it's spectacular, and in another way, sort of like, let me just run out of the chess. Yeah. Let me just run away. It's also I mean, going to safety, right? It can go to c2 if necessary, and then hide in on the queen side. I like it. So no, I really, really do. No threats. Uh, king to d3. Should we have a couple of moves? King Nepo to d3, rook to mm -hmm. d8. Again, I think he's playing right now on just impetus. Uh, do you think this is right, what Nepo's doing? He is blitzing his moves. He has 15 minutes on the clock. No. <laughs> uh, truly, truly no. One of the things that I've always loved about my opponents being into time trouble mm -hmm. is I like let you enjoy the time trouble. So even when I'm absolutely sure I'm gonna make my next move, it's sort of like I just 
take another 30 seconds to chill. So I try to use a minute per move, just mm -hmm. like to keep that pace. Even when I have this feeling that in this position I would play king c2. Um, well, but this game looks C4. terrible. This, yeah. Th yeah, this game looks terrible. Uh, quick check, Miro, if you don't mind, tell us about the Fabby game because that one might be ending shortly. Okay, let me see. Uh, well, no. I wouldn't be so sure, to be honest. <laughs> no, uh, not at all. Well, he's gotten back the advantage, it seems, because remember we were talking about, about Rook B8 being Rook a B8. serious yeah. chance, but it would involve letting White sacrifice the knight on C5. And Abbasov decided to be solid, go H6, which happens to be a mistake, because then Rook F2 and White somehow manages to regroup. Just goes Rook F2, Bishop C4, that's what was played, and let me check, Abbasov, no, he's not on seconds, I just thought, yeah, maybe he's on seconds, not really. No. Rook F5, knight, uh, Bishop B3, and now Ooh. Queen B3, Rook A5. No, ah, no, well, well, no, well, no, right no, you no. are. So, wait, something has happened. So, no, no, no. That was still no, fine. Was Bishop B3 is a terrible mistake, Terrible mistake. Out. So queen because takes, look at this rook takes, square. and I guess rook f1. Of course. Is it on the, and it's on the board. Right, no, so you're just that was. you're just going to go rook f7. Absolutely, so that was a huge miss. Uh, well, what was that? spotted it immediately. Wait a minute, so rook a7? Rook a7, ah, so this is, this is. E6, E6 my E6, friend. right. You can't stop rook f7. And yeah, rook f7, and whenever rook f7 is on the board. If you play rook a1, I got queen c3 check. Yes. Ooh. Rook A1, and then you don't up play to Rook you, F7. That's C3 or B2. Yeah, yeah, Rook F7 would be a mistake because <laughs> yeah. then Queen takes, and all of a sudden the position Oops. is equal according to the machine. Yes, Oops. and White is lucky not to be lost. Right. What's happening today? And all the games something, are finishing before move 40. Something very <laughs> strange. Blunders, uh, early okay. in the game. blunders at the end here, and again, I'm not sure that this Completely time wrong. control isn't playing a little bit with the player's heads. By the way, and we do have another move. With after. Abbasov, it's same issue as uh, with Firuja. He also has no experience playing with no increment. I just got a live, I've got a live uh, move uh, here. Guess what? We've got live Look result. Fabiano oh, Carvalho has won one. his game against Abbasov, so yeah. finally manages to realize one of his white bullets. Exactly. Right. Mm -hmm. He was, well, fairly close yesterday against yeah. Hikara, but yeah, today. The, the final would have been a check made if you'd taken the pawn in that final position and resigned. Uh, by the way, that was something that we pointed out in day one is that uh, for this event, um, Hikaru is starting with three out of four of his games with the white pieces. Fabi. And, Fabi. And Prague is starting three out of four with the black pieces. So both these two players are going to be really challenged. And for Fabi, if he hadn't won one of these mm -hmm. extra whites, and you called it a bullet, uh, Miro, for very good reasons, his chances of winning the tournament, I think, would really be difficult. Uh, winning today was just what he needed. I mean, perfect, perfect, perfect timing for him in this game. And that leaves our remaining game. Uh, Ali Reza, what's going on? Oh, but uh, let me interrupt myself. As we're hoping to get that uh, Begum will, uh, Fabi will join Begum, but we're getting set up on that interview. But again, a very, very big result uh, for today. Not only because Fabi had two wins and uh, two whites and had to win one, but also he was playing Nijad, who is the least um, He's on the rating list. So right. Everyone tries to get the point against Nijad, right? Exactly. So this is a big win for Fabi, and he showed. Uh, he played a very comfortable game. It seemed well, very smooth. But at, at, but at the same hand, what Miro just showed us uh, was at the end it was just a collapse. This is not a bad position for Black, and we mm -hmm. think that if he had played instead of h6, king h8, Black would have been just absolutely fine. Um, h6 was okay. Bishop takes c4. Well, already, uh, why are you trading off this beautiful f5 pawn? But I'm going to interrupt myself. And uh, we're going to go uh, to Toronto and with Begum. Take it away. We did. Congratulations on your win against Hikaru. You started the tournament with uh, black pieces, two games. 
double black and still, what's going on with your bishops? <laughs> Yesterday you made a brilliant move, bishop g4, and today even better. Can you uh, talk about your game a little bit? Yeah, uh, thank you. Um, this was part of uh, preparation. Mm -hmm. Yesterday was over the board improvisation. Yeah. Um, very happy to get like you know such a flashy move and then um, the subsequent moves so can't really complain a big thanks to my team uh, mm -hmm. for you know coming up with this and so was it a preparation against Hikaru before the tournament or you guys came up with it yesterday um, I'll not delve into those details because it might give some info to my opponents mm -hmm. uh, but probably after the tournament it would be a... Sounds good. Yeah. And also, uh, did you think about his move knight c4 before the round? You know, no, knights... just players who have a tendency just to move around the pieces when they have such a great number. <laughs> <laughs> no, knight c4 I didn't really consider. It looks a bit strange, like his king is weak and I'm spoiled for choice. Um, I think bishop g4 was fine. Mm -hmm. Queen C2, and here I could even play Knight G6 or Bishop C7. I mean, yeah. it's when you look at the position, you realize that all my pieces are like aiming at his king, and he's he's underdeveloped here. Yeah. So, um, and yeah, it's, I think the evaluation also suggests that Black is clearly better. Mm -hmm. You also mentioned instead of Knight C4, if he takes, which is the right move, right? Yeah, Queen, Queen B8, B8, Bishop F4, Bishop, Bishop C7. C7. I was wondering if he could just play Bishop G3 yeah, it's instead of Bishop definitely Bishop possible. I take the Knight F4, Bishop moves, and you know the line goes on. He, so you knew. Yeah, way I knew. Deeper. Yes, yes. I mean, if I give the Bishop and I don't know it, I would look really stupid. That's true. It's, um, but Hikaru said that um, I can't really find. It. Yeah. Uh, it's here. Queen B8, Bishop F4, Bishop C7. Hikaru said that he saw Bishop G5, mm -hmm. Bishop E5, F4, and he thought that after H6 it's a draw. Yeah. But now I see that Injin is showing this brilliant move, Knight G6. Wow. Is that a wow or you're just faking the no, move? No, 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 I did not know this. It's really cool. Mm -hmm. And uh, wow, it's winning for black. That's awesome. And also, after knight c4, you won the game pretty comfortably, I would say. You didn't give him any chance to come back to the game. Yeah, it's rare that Hikaru, you know, collapses like this um, yeah. because he's very stubborn in defense. Yeah. But just his position did not give him that opportunity. So you found his weakness. <laughs> I mean, his king was clearly weak here today, so I didn't have to struggle to find his weakness. Mm -hmm. uh, so we did. What was your mindset in coming into the tournament, knowing that you have double black? I didn't really think too much about mm -hmm. it um, because. I have no control over it, so it doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, but in hindsight, uh, it makes a lot of sense now that um, my prep I could prepare better for it. So it worked out well so far. Um, and is that like uh, tougher to play when you have double black and then you don't have any increment? You guys chose to play two hours without any increment. How do you handle the pressure and how you're like... Yeah, you know, this without doing? increment is really strange. Yeah. Because the last time I played without increment must be 15 years ago. Mm. In a, any normal tournament like when I was a kid. Yeah. Uh, and after that directly in candidates. Um, I think there should be more uniformity in the tank controls. Mm -hmm. Um, that would be my feedback to, <laughs> to tournament organizers because so every tournament we go, there is a different time control, yeah. so it doesn't make sense. I think even for spectators. Yeah. Uh, so, but yeah, I mean, it is what it is. I have to deal with it. Uh, mm -hmm. So I was definitely keeping a watch uh, on my clock because mm -hmm. Hikaru uh, is very good in opponent's time pressure, yeah. uh, but my position was so easy that. Um, it didn't really matter. Okay, it's nice. And also, last question. Do you have a routine during the tournaments or are you doing something special for this tournament? Uh, in every tournament, there's a different schedule. Um, so probably how you start your day and then um, you realize that you feel good throughout it, then you keep repeating it. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll not change drastically anything. Um, Hopefully so the interviews too. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, it would be my pleasure to come here and show such games. So. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. And good luck with the tournament. Thank you. Thank you, Begum. And our congratulations, uh, Vida. A very, 
very, very impressive victory. Uh, we talk about accuracy, but it seems to me that uh, I won't, I would not second guess any of uh, Vidat's moves today. He played a splendid game. We have two games in progress still in the open section. One game also between uh, two Indian players, Prague versus Gukesh, and Prague was going attack, attack, mm -hmm. attack, attack. He ended up sacrificing uh, a piece, and Miro, I don't see it. I think this is just a technically winning position for Gukesh now. Uh, oh, but well, you have the other game. It's I okay. have the other game because they mind. Well, the intrigue was uh, Ferruja was down to a few seconds, That's right? True. And would he reach move 40 or not? Well, exactly. as you know, as a very good blitz player, he will, but that will be his only achievement in the game. White is rook up and completely winning. Right. So we expect the result here quite soon. And for the other one, they are also in a time trouble. And Gosh. yeah, so the, the, there was, since you highlighted the position, there was more mistakes. <laughs> so, uh, basically, white played h5 and apparently just overlooked bishop c5, attacking the queen, attacking the f2 pawn. So now it's, you know, the evaluation Oops. is once again a huge, huge minus. The best you can do, according to the machine, is to go e7 mm. and then the queen is taken. And, right, you so take, take here. Check. King takes, you, you take have to bishop. take the bishop. So you're down the queen for the rook. Rook a minor piece. No. No, for, for the rook. rook. Yeah, queen for the rook. So oh, it's, well. uh, computer doesn't say it's good. It, it says <laughs> the best you have. So you yeah. imagine like other other lines even worse. Or even worse. Well, I think all uh, the mistakes happened because they're the both down to two minutes, Prague actually down to one, and they still had to make 10 moves. That's why everything just mm. collapsed. Very Perhaps. quickly. Queen g5 was in fact Queen to played. G5 he, and uh, bishop takes b6. e6 is on the board. So he decided not to take on f2, just to get <laughs> rid of the most, you know, most dangerous piece, so to speak, of the e6 pawn. Well, I, I know that so well. You're, you've been black, and ever since the opening, white has played mm -hmm. e6, and this pawn has been, you know, right in your throat the whole time. So take it. Bishop takes e6. And uh, h. Five h6. What uh, what so move the time, are they on? Uh, they are on move 33. Still seven moves to go. Prague with 41 seconds. Gukesh with two minutes and 20 seconds, which I think is plenty of time to win this position. Well, but 41 seconds. Uh, and okay, I'm not saying the position's still tricky, but I will just point boldly point out and the obvious. There is, yeah, exactly. There is a pawn on h6. And, you know, you don't want to ever see a 97 check throwing you uh, a kill. In this stone. moment, also, Gukesh might be s super excited because this game, he wasn't winning until last, like, five, maybe ten moves, probably exactly. less. And all of a sudden, he's winning, and they have a few seconds on the clock, a lot going on. So Rook we should stay with this game and Rook see. Rook takes F2. By if the way, it ends I before mean, move 40. I, I, again, he took the pawn on E6. This pawn on H6 is in... In my mind's eye, uh, a sore. I would take on d5. I would take on f2 with check, and I take on h6. Just clear I, the board. Of I threats. confirm on, <laughs> on this. Yes, and then just, I'm tempted to check if your line is better. I don't think so. Rook f2 is one of the strongest moves Bruce, in the position. Okay. It kind of highlights, you know, the philosophy of a younger generation. So he's not scared. He believes he's it's a good scared. move, and he plays the good move. Exactly. I think just flagged, unless we have some delay, because it shows I'm that seeing he... zero zeros. Yep. It looks like, uh, it, but the position... There's no action. result. Oh, well, yeah. there is. It seemed that he lost on time, but the position was hopeless as Rook takes well. F2. Wow, an incredibly eventful day. We're expecting uh, another victory in Jan's game as well. Ah, so let me, yeah, let me bring it up. Wow. So last game running is Nepomneshi against Firuja, and they've just reached move Time 40. Sure. So that's the first game, I think. <laughs> to get past move 40. <laughs> to get past move 40. <laughs> wow. And we have a lot of results today, yes. Yeah, so. Absolutely. So let's just quickly look at the, well, the current position on the board. And, yeah, not much to be done. To be honest, the king is relatively safe. Then, once again, kind of, my move would be something like queen e4, centralize, defend everything, which drops significant part of the advantage. <laughs> <laughs> any, as any human move nowadays. <laughs> so instead, yeah, computer says just take it. 
and the only kind of active option for black that I can think of, take the pawn on g3, you are threatening some discovered checks maybe, and then the king just runs to c2, and then b1, and yeah, it's a rook. It's an extra rook after yeah, all. So yeah. a lot of things changed, Yasa and dear viewers, yeah, a lot of things ch uh, change in modern chess, but extra rook is still an extra rook. I remember I, I have uh, played against Sergei Mer Makarchev, Makarchev, and I I played a brilliant game, uh, sacrificing a rook. And at the end, there was no compensation. <laughs> it was a rook. <laughs> so I just ran out of firewood. I would have sacrificed more. But this looks like wow uh, for Jan. Um, it was actually something that uh, big shout out to Dan Underwood uh, for for doing this for us. Is uh, our stati our stats is how good these guys have played in the candidates' tournaments and uh, what their overall records are. Well, uh, in one, one particular player, Jan, stood out. He has played in two candidates. This is his third candidate, to be sure. And his overall record in candidates' play has been 10 wins, 17 draws, and two losses. Let me correct myself. Eleven wins. <laughs> you know, he he plays very very well in these tournaments, and no other way of uh, describing it, Miro. Right, right. It. and pre-tournament predictions, if you remember. Yeah. Here's the candidate's experience uh, to talk about. I mean, I see. And I actually just wanted to add to what you were saying that Nepo previously played in two candidates and right? he won both of them. So Hello. statistically speaking, he should be, of course, one of the favorites to win again. Exactly. And there's Fabi. This is his fifth candidate's appearance. He's played in four previously. He has won one of these editions. Hikaru has never won the candidates. He's uh, hoping third time's a charm. And of course, for four of our players, it's their rookie uh, outings as... Uh, well, to be fair, they're all under age of 20, so... <laughs> <laughs> Don't rub it in. Not... <laughs> right. And let me remind you, Yasa, that even great Bobby Fischer didn't win his first uh, candidates no, he, he participated in at the age of 17? roughly 80, 17? 17, yes. So, uh, Michael so that Tall, means 4-0 against... So that him. means uh, Prague and, you know, Gukesh, they still have a chance. <laughs> have a lot of chances. Uh, uh, Again, uh, for me, by the way, I, I'm with Miro 100%. I like pawns, A, B, 5. I like that move. But I would also very, very seriously be thinking of this, in my way of thinking, strong centralizing move, queen to E4, uh, just giving the king added protection. But more importantly, you know, eyeballing bishop takes E5 check, trying to force things. And after queen takes G3, then you're just running back. Right. Of course, uh, you know, I could play AB5 a moment ago, but, the, you know, being extra cautious, being be well, safe when you're a rook ahead. Nepo's not knowing, known for being extra cautious. <laughs> extra cautious. He took the pawn on B5. Okay, he sees a good move, he plays a good move. Uh, nothing doing. AB, AB. And, and we have rook C8 also on the board. Okay. So... The last so now, gasp, saloon. Please now we can play our move, yes. Our Finally, desire. now queen e4 is not only possible, but very, very strong. And then queen takes g3. Yeah, after sorry. queen g3, since my king can't run to c2, how right. do I avoid all this Rook a to discovery c1. checks? You, ch you just don't care. <laughs> <laughs> discover check, double check. Well, rook a to c1, I understand, but how one plays rook h1 in this position, this is beyond me. If you're not an engine or not using an engine, rook h1 is not an easy move to find. It's too cold. Yeah, yeah. rook h1, white is just winning. Uh, you, can, you can double check, you can discover check, but at the end of the day, the threats aren't there. Actually, right? white can play rook h1 without queen e4. No After way. rook c8. If you're gonna if, hold on, Isn't rook more c8. Because you don't have queen Yeah, well, that, that's a better move. Like once again, <laughs> in, in human terms, rook to h1. You're an extra rook. Why don't you try to exchange the queens? Yes, Nasty and if cold blood kind of rook h1, the wow. best move is queen to d7. Queen to d7. Is oh, the best you move? still allow some sharpness, right? Mm -hmm. Not a lot, but queen e4. Check on b5. There is a check on b5. Queen e4. Queen takes b5. Check. King e3. 
Right. You just came to E3. I thought I was running to the queen side. Yes, yeah, so that, that's you're, you're a, convincing that's a me that I've got to run to the G4 square. But could white play queen B3 and not give up either of those pawns? After now queen you're talking. Not going queen E4. Right. After uh, queen D7. Okay, sorry. So rook H1 you like. Mm -hmm. You want to go back to D7, and then so you just want to queen B3? Hang, hanging on to everything. But then you I get checked from a five, and <laughs> again, so it's... Well, but how how serious is that? I mean, I'm moving king my three? king. Although, well, no, I've got yeah. checks downstairs. Uh, White is winning in all of those lines. Yes, it's just that right. Uh, like pick one. You right? have to you have to spend some time apparently and just find the all the best what suits you and yeah, White should win. By the way, I would really like to. Um, reinforce everything that Vidit said in his interview and this idea of just standardizing all the time control so you know what is a blitz game, you know what is mm -hmm. a bullet game, you know what is a classical game. And just again for the audience, the, for the open section it's 40 moves in two hours with no increments. So we actually saw a player losing on time today uh, well, as I opposed the to the 30 second that... increment. At the World Championship match, they plan to have this similar time control. As no the increment. candidates. Right. So the candidates is kind of a preparation for the World Championship match. As it should be. I right. mean, if you're going to play the 100 meter goal, mm -hmm. uh, you're going to run the 100 meters. You don't run the 90 meters in the semifinals. Um, but then the second time control does feature increments. Yes. <laughs> For the open section, mm -hmm. you, you've got this, uh, what is it, 30, 30 minutes and 30 seconds for the si mm -hmm. second time control for the open. So it, it, is it, isn't it off-putting? It's yeah. a little bit illogical, I would say, Yasa, right? because at first place they've invented increments to avoid people losing on time in Bingo. winning positions Bingo. and so on. And then we are reintroducing the, you know, the time control where we, you don't have an increment and so on. Okay, I mean, I'm not the one to criticize, but no. yeah, I'm totally on board with the idea. Let's unify. Exactly. Let's call it classic, whatever it's going to be. Maybe it's going to be one hour till the end of the game. But we all know you come to play the classical event, you don't have to ask the arbiter what's the time control here. What's the time Because that's been cases, right? Yeah. And well, I think now, people were losing on time not knowing there is no increment after move 40, for Magnus instance. Miss Carlson. Magnus Absolutely. Miss Carlson in the Norway event. And again, I'm not going to really uh, criticize Fide too harshly on this particular occasion, because in this particular occasion, it was the players who were polled mm -hmm. by Fide. And Fide simply followed the recommendation of the players it doesn't help the commentators <laughs> we have to explain what the time control is because it's an unusual one rook c8 on the board any updates uh, Nasi, on no this one? because since they reached move 40 they're actually on move 42 um, they have edit 30 minutes so Nap was taking his time he knows he just has to make a couple of accurate moves and the game will be over well in this particular case most especially after the move rook c8 so the queen on h3 uh, defends the rook, clear. So to my way of thinking, the, uh, I'm a rook up. I want to trade pieces, so I love your move, rook h1. It's an yeah. engine's move, but thank you. <laughs> well, okay, but I, I seriously, because the one thing I'm worried about is that you're going to take this pawn and my king's going to be a little bit safe. Okay, uh, uh, and unsafe, may I, sorry. without please. using an engine, please, suggest please, please. that you might be scared of knight e1 check, for instance. Maybe you're not, but... Knight e1 check? I don't know why, but I thought... Oh, no, okay. you're not scared. You just take queen g3, you block. No, you're not scared. <laughs> uh, Never well, mind. It still needs to be calculated. Oh, there's no e4. Yeah, rook e3. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. that's it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, e4. But uh, a very eventful uh, day two. We got to update everybody on what we've seen so far because it's been a stunner. Unlike Let's start yesterday. with the open. Yeah, we unlike don't have yesterday. Any draws today so far in the open section? We have Vidit. Defeating Hikaru Nakamura with the black Huge pieces. Result with black. Gukesh with the black pieces def uh, defeating Prague. And Fabiano, smooth win against Nijo de Paso. And Jan uh, looking to wrap things up as well. So we'd have four decisive results in the open section and in the ladies. Uh, they've, they've been done for the last 30 minutes or so. 
Yeah, they have shorter time control, so. Right. They finished earlier, so Tan Zhonggi extended her lead with perfect score, and Goryachkina won today against Anna Muzichuk. The other games ended in a draw. Yeah, perfect result, of, perfect start for Tan. But I just want to say that uh, that's a huge result on board four, because I, mm -hmm. I, in my mind, you know, Anna, you know, I think she's due to become a challenger, right? So that really takes a lot of wind out of her sails. Definitely. In her uh, 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 <laughs> campaign to become a challenger. I wanted to go again back to the position that we have on the board between Jan and Ali Reza, as we were just about to say. So to my mind, the move Rook H1 is really, really nice because here, you know, I'm thinking if I move my queen, this queen takes g3, and I still have some disturbance in the mm -hmm. force, right? Uh, something could go wrong. But if I can play rook h1, chase your queen back to d7, and then, as you so wisely pointed out, keep your pawn, protect and your pawns. I didn't love that move, actually. Queen b3? Prefers queen e4, allowing queen b5, and then just running to the other side. King Which, e3. Yeah, yeah, that was the one we... I thought that was really funny. I was trying to hide my king on mm -hmm. c2 a moment ago. Suddenly <laughs> I'm hiding my king on g4. And again, any any checks I can just block with my queen. And I'm threatening mate on h7 yeah. as well. Okay, yes, sir. Yes, please. I can explain your desire to go queen b3. Yes. Because you are really the endgame maestro and you really want to play an endgame. Because I you know what know. happens after queen b3? No. Uh, Black gives a check. Let, let me show you quickly. Uh, let me find it. Uh, queen b3. Black gives a check on f5. Okay. And, and then she... naturally you have two moves. King e2 loses. Just let me inform you. King e2 loses. Rook c2 check. Uh, yes. Uh, queen e4 check. Or, so you go king e3. Yeah. And unsuspecting anything, you are rook up after all. Knight to d4. And it turns out Remind the me. only move to win is rook a to f1. After which black can capture on f1, rook f1, and knight b3, five. and there is no argument. White is still winning, but you were rook up. <laughs> not, Pardon me. Now, not, now you have to play the end game, which is winning, but, but not, not what I you would prefer when I was to. A rook up. Absolutely, you I'm would prefer to avoid this one. I'm sorry, but why is that so clearly winning? Black's up a pawn in that end game. <laughs> Um, uh, Dano, <laughs> the board says, yeah, rook to f5, I guess. So rook king to is f5, still and weak. then g5 falls, e5 falls, and so, but again, you do mm. not go for this voluntarily, being a rook up. So you, you start with rook f5, not bishop e5 in this position? You start with rook f5? That's a I mean, one. in the very end game, yes, you are. But How about that one? You want to take and take... We don't know. Eagle Eye, uh, Nasi, uh, Black was a pawn up. <laughs> Wait a minute. Why is this so clearly winning? By the way, I do believe we have Rook H1 and Queen D7 on, on board. the board. Yeah. And once again, remind me what move number are they on? They've, uh, they're on move 43 now, so, so they don't have to worry about the time trouble. And it's all increments from now right. on, uh, no, no, uh, 30 second increments, mm -hmm. I want to say. and. Here, uh, I must confess, uh, I do play? like Queen e4, especially not just what you, you've pointed out, that ending, but I, I love that mate on h7. Sorry, uh, Nasi, you were about to say? Queen I was e4? just thinking if Queen b4 was also possible, and on, on Queen d5, King e3, I didn't find any more checks after that. True, but yeah. let's check this queen one. Five, so three. queen to b4, right you are. Queen b4 is a good move. Queen b4 wins relatively easy, so it's a check. King to e3. e3. Looks comfy. King is perfectly safe and, yeah, on e3. Yeah, and the king is safe <laughs> on e3. Really and no more, no more tricks, because say knight d4, you just take twice and you exchange the queens, <laughs> right? <laughs> With check. So if this... Do you take? Yes, you do take. Uh, no. Uh, <laughs> Bishop c1, it's it's a misclick. Luckily, <laughs> over the board chess, you can't really, right. you know. And yeah, queen d4, and then black would have various kinds of check from e8 and so on, but his own king is in check, and therefore exactly. queen's exchanged then. Right. Okay. So, so queen d7 on the board. Uh, various, uh, and various ways to victory. Queen b3, queen b4 or two, but I have to confess once again, 
that queen e4 would be my choice. Again, I'm looking at the pawn on, uh, on h7. I'm ready to run for the hills on the king's side suddenly. And most importantly, to my eyes, I want to play bishop e5. I think... Uh, so you're, for, you're defending but also creating threats. a lot of threats. Exactly. And I think um, all the grandmasters just love those dual moves where you can both def play a defensive move yeah. as well as an offensive move as well. Queen e4 fits the bill on just checks a lot of boxes for me. Uh, what would your choice be? That's I would use all my time. <laughs> <laughs> so, because he's up a full rook. He just needs yes. to calculate next three, four moves. As soon as you see that, you can hide your king from checks. Oh, yes. If I calculate a queen before, queen d5, king e3, I would go for that. Right. Because no more checks, I feel safe. He okay. Did play something, and it is queen, queen e4. to e4. Yeah. Merciless. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Uh, Mira, talk to why is Jan. Why does this tournament in particular suit Jan so well? I mean, obviously he's a great player. I mean, and he's won a lot of events. Uh, but winning, just participating in the candidates is hard enough. But winning back-to-back -back candidates and starting as he is so well. This guy... He's only seventh in the world, <laughs> but he makes the candidates look easy. What's going on? Uh, well, uh, <laughs> no, I don't have an answer to this question. I wish I, I, I knew. Uh, we put it in a can and sell it for a million uh, bucks. Yeah. Right. <laughs> well, I think it was discussed during the pre, you know, pre-tournament predictions because yeah. he's not uh, the one very top on the rating. Mm -hmm. His recent performances in other tournaments were not that impressive, but then mm -hmm. You check that in the candidates specifically, he does extremely well. Right. And you know what? It, it, well, something really changed a lot with Nepo, like last few years, because he always been known for being like very bright, talented player, can play spectacular games, can beat anyone. He, and for a long quickly. time, he kept a positive record against Magnus. Yes. Right. But he was always considered to be unstable, mm -hmm. and unstable in a way that he might lead the tournament, then lose first game, and then, and then yeah, everything falls apart. Right. But those two candidate tournaments, if you think of it, they had like an interesting story, dude. Because the moment he lost his first game in 2020 candidates, the tournament has stopped for <laughs> almost a year. Right. Right? In the last round. Right? Absolutely. So yeah. he had some time to recover after a loss. Right. And then the next candidates, we don't know if he would have fallen apart because he chose not to lose a single game. Exactly. <laughs> he was never under that challenge, that cloud. Right. That, I mean, somehow it just works for him. Yes. And I recall uh, especially a, an Olympiad uh, he, uh, he's leading uh, the Russian team. He has 6-0. Uh, he has a 6-0 score, and he's playing Wesley Do you know So. Which board? I think it was board three. 6-0. Uh, wow. 6-0, and he plays Wesley So in this in huge match, uh, U.S. versus Russia, and Wesley won with the black pieces, mm -hmm. and it was sort of like, you know, after that. You know, it wasn't the same guy who was 6 0 for, for Jan. So he runs very, very hot at times and sometimes very cold. Queen e4 on the board. Ali Reza, any cheapos uh, mm. that the, the, the com computer could recommend? No, really, too many threats for, for white as well, right? right. Like bishop to e5. Yeah, that was looking like to some. Tricky moves. That G4, can't, for yeah, example. like Throw G4, one of one of the things computer recommends. And right, what happens? There's nothing wrong with you, say, taking only five, king, king to G8, and then again, computer goes with some brutal stuff like rook to H5, wants to checkmate you. Mm. But I guess yeah, there's nothing wrong with say playing this, right, for instance, and then after this check, you mm. say, okay, I go king C2. You mm. ran out of checks. I'm threatening all everywhere, various everywhere. queen g4, queen e6, queen h7. No, it's just terrible. Disaster, disaster written all over it. It's right. queen e4. Wow. In terms of you know opening fight and post opening fight, it probably was the most you know interesting in a way, like kind of peculiar game because Jan played a very strange looking opening idea. If we can get right. your board, yeah. 
I've got this. And this was, uh, and I, I said, you know, right here after this move, uh, Bishop G4, because I was a bit tasered mm -hmm. by, the, by the, the following sequence. So I think for 99% of the players in our audience, the move Bishop G4 would have come with you know, serious significance. You do not want to see the move Bishop takes F3 landing on your doorstep and disturbing your kings, uh, damaging your pawn structure. And so you would take whatever efforts to take uh, countermeasures to prevent that. So what Jan did instead was really remarkable. Not only did he allow black to carry out bishop takes f3, but he, he forced him to win a pawn at the same time that he was doing it. He forced him with the move queen a2. Please take my knight, bishop takes f3. I will gladly capture on d5. So Ali Reza said, knight b6. Now I'm attacking your bishop. What are you going to do about your knight? Nothing. Bishop f3, bishop f3, gf3, queen takes d3. And for me, this was an extraordinary sequence that could have only come with great preparation. Miro, yes, Nassi, I, I, I remember in. looking at this before we went live, and he had only spent five minutes on the clock, so this was right. absolutely a preparation. But what, what prep to walk into this position right. voluntarily? <laughs> well, for, for sure. So I, I have this uh, image in my mind. Mm -hmm. There's Nepo having a really good night's sleep. You know, he wakes up in the morning and he gets a cup of java, comes into this serious analysis room where you know a group of grandmasters are huddled over a position. Okay, guys, what have you got for me? You know, look, <laughs> we want you to play White's position. <laughs> guys, each and every one of you are fired, and I never want to see you again. Uh, right? I mean, are, you, are you kidding me? Yeah, this I'm is afraid. Prep? I'm afraid, Yasa, you're still living a bit like in the past because there is no room with a bunch of grandmasters. It's one guy sending you, sending you the file over the. The, you know, email or whatever, and moreover, mm -hmm. since it's all checked with the computer, you do not doubt the guy. You, right. ju you just repeat your file and go play the game. Right. Uh, I'm checking with. Uh, honestly, it's a weak engine, right? I mean, what, weak, compared uh, to what they have. Yeah, it would give us simultaneous and, and beat well to nil, but it's a weak engine by their standards, and it suggests Queen A2 as being not much worse than any other move. So do you think that, oh, we're certain yeah. it, was, uh, it was Jan's preparation, no question Absolutely. about that. But do you think that this surprised uh, Ali Reza? Ali Reza also didn't spend much time, so he was quite familiar with the position So as well. knight b6 mm -hmm. came, not a la tempo, but knight b6 came, bishop f3 uh, came, queen takes d3. And let me tell you, somewhere things, here, which is move 19, okay. and yeah, let, let me repeat for a few years. So this is the pawn sacrificed, king right. to g2, then the queen is a little bit in danger, right? Rook, Rook d1, d1 is a threat, so queen goes back. Very Rook logical. d1, queen goes to e8. And then, now that I'm checking, computer says bishop e3, f4, but also h4 is one of the moves. Wow. So it was still a preparation, I would consider this one. Right. Knight to c8, and I think we were ch checking with Nazi before going on air, and it was still relatively fast. By the way, we do have a done deal at last. Uh, we, we knew that Jan was going to win. He was a, a, a rook up, but now it's official. If you don't mind, just jump to the final position. Absolutely. Where did it, uh, how did it finish? So queen to, I oh know, wait, it's a king went here, king e3. Give me your knight. Attacking the knight, knight d4, bishop d4 resigns. Nothing to be done. Relatively trivial, yeah, so take. Yeah. What do we do, yes? If, I if take the pawn with the king. You take the pawn, you win. With the king. You take with the queen, you win. <laughs> yeah, like probably there is no, can I go wrong? No, I win. You can't even go wrong so with this. Not a legal move, which would spoil the win. Yeah, absolutely yeah. winning. Well, let's take a look at the results both ways. Uh, Nasi, do the honors. What an eventful day for the Open. Has this ever happened in the candidates before? No draws in the, in the I round? I suspect <laughs> it has, but the rarity, maybe once before. This is so rare. And a split with the colors, too. Absolutely. If you had told me it's a whitewash, <laughs> Right. In a previous, yeah, yeah, but 2-2? Two, two?
remarkable. Right. Big wins for Vidit, Gukash, Nepo and Fabi today. Congratulations. And in the ladies section. And in the latest, we had two wins with White, Tan Zhonggi and Karyachkina were the winners of today's round. And again, that result on the fourth board, I think that's just huge. And our congratulations to Tan uh, for her outstanding start, 2-0. Uh, <laughs> how, how sweet it is. As, wow, uh, we're going to get ready to uh, ask Toronto what they think. But before we do that... You want to ask me? Yeah, I want to ask you what you think, Mira. Uh, that it's was nice of you. And I have to confess, after yesterday's start in the open section, I've turned myself in a bit of a skeptic. You know, I thought, uh, in a way that, yeah, too many draws, and what if it becomes, you know, one of those tournaments that everyone is somewhat afraid and tries mm -hmm. to be like really solid, and we'll have, I don't know, five rounds of this? Right. No, we won't, because no. today, even though yeah, half of the players on the same score, we don't have the clear leader, but sure. the blood <laughs> yeah. was spilled. And then, yeah, those who lost will try to come back. Those who uh -huh. won will try to extend the lead. So it's, it's a completely different tournament after today's mm -hmm. round. No question about it. And we do have a, a bit of a feature as we were uh, uh, coming on, onto our shows. And uh, our feature, this one, is about Fabi. When Fabi is hot, he really is one of the most amazing uh, players. His achievement at the Sinkville Cup, where he won seven games in a row, certainly the streak <laughs> is what we called it. He demolished the field, the best of the best, including Magnus Carlsen. Please, uh, take a look. When we go back to review the 2014 Sinkfield Cup and Fabiano Caruana's amazing performance, it's important to point out that going in, this was the highest rated tournament in history, where the average rating was 28.02. All the great players were there. Fide rated one, two, three, five, eight, and nine in the world. In the first round of 10 rounds in this double round robin, Fabi did away with the formidable Veselin Topolov, Fabi with the black pieces. In the second round, Caruana with White would conquer the Frenchman Maxime Vachir Legrand. The much anticipated third round paired world champion Magnus Carlsen with Fabi. Fabi would play with Black and would outplay Magnus. Fabi was now three in a row, and he would continue like that for four more rounds, putting away Lavon Aronian, Hikaru Nakamura, Veselin Topolov again, MVL again, until finally in the eighth round, Magnus was able to stop the runaway train with a draw. The final scores were staggering. Caruana would win the Sinkfield Cup with a score of 8.5 out of a possible 10. In chess terms, that's a 3098 performance rating, the highest in elite chess history. His performance has been compared to the one and only Bobby Fischer's 1970 to 1971 streak when Bobby won 20 games in a row. The other Sinkfield Cup players were complimentary. Fantastico, Hikaru said. MVL called him ruthless. And as for Magnus, as only Magnus can, called it depressing. 2014 was a warning to the chess world from Fabiano Caruana. You ain't seen nothing yet. Special times indeed, as uh, I remember calling that action of the Sinkville Cup and coming in day after day and uh, the streak. And in that eighth game, what a lot of people forget too, was um, Fabi had the black pieces against Magnus. And in a, in a particular moment, Fabi had a win and we were all just so ag agog, like what if he were to go 10-0? Like, it's never happened in history. Right, like, like <laughs> that would have been just uh, unbelievably spectacular. But when, when Fabi is on his A game, he is really, really remarkable. The victory today helps him a lot, confidence-wise, yeah, all absolutely. kinds of good feelings uh, percolate after today's win, Miro. Yeah, well, uh, I don't think he struggles confidence-wise. Mm -hmm. But yeah, if you start with two whites, have two promising positions and win none, Get then you might guess, start kind of second guessing yourself. Right. Am I in a good shape? And right. what's, what's wrong? Even what's though, wrong? yeah, Nothing's we know wrong. how, you know, how 
chess has such a drawing margins that you can play a perfect game, you can get an advantage, but your opponent defends and a boss of at the very end, if he wouldn't collapse, we don't know, maybe it would have been another draw. Exactly. But yeah, it's a huge boost for Fabian. Right. I think, yeah, and very good chances. I think that's pretty common. Uh, for just about everybody. Sometimes you play really well, you don't score a lot of points. Sometimes you play poorly and <laughs> all the points are coming in your way. It's amazing. You can't even predict it, you know? No, right. You need to play well and you need some luck. Exactly. Sure. And for these candidate tournaments, both are uh, definite requirements. And besides playing for the, ch the title of challenger, mm -hmm. what else are they here for? They're playing for a lot of money. Tell me about it. <laughs> uh, in the open section, the first place winner is going to get 48,000 euros. Right. Second place, 36,000. Third, 24,000. And each player, in addition, will receive 3,500 euros for every half point scored. So every victory brings you 7,000 euros. Pretty nice. And what about the ladies? <laughs> and in the ladies, uh, first place, 24,000 euros. Second place, 18. Third, 12 and each player will receive additional 1,750 euros for half point. You're making me do the math. 3,500 <laughs> <laughs> for every uh, victory for the ladies. And uh, we talked about uh, uh, predictions of a winner uh, prior to the tournament uh, based on ELOs, but we also we created our own little models based on such things of how the players have done head to head. And this is the uh, St. Louis Chess Club's predict model, if you will. And so far, um, Fabi and Nepo are going playing accordingly because they both started with wins. They're playing um, their roles, yes. And Hikaru needs to um, come back after today's loss. Right. Vidit didn't get the memo, though. He said, wait a minute, guys, uh, that six and a half out of uh, uh, 14 score won't, won't do it for me. Let me start with a win. All right, today he had a very quick and easy win with the black pieces. And I think he said it very well, did Vidit. He said, Hikaru, you are going to beat Hikaru on occasion, but he's going to put up the most determined, tenacious resistance he possibly could. And Miro, there was just no resistance there. Yeah, today, his today it was, was not pathetic. it. Today it was not it. So it wasn't the Hikaru we know. Right. And you know, perhaps in a blitz game he would put more resistance, realizing right. faster that. So I don't know what happened to Hikaru. It might have been, you know, he could have been ambitious till the moment when it really went bad. Right. Because sometimes it happens. It doesn't have to do with your even with your chess skill. Mm -hmm. It's just that, yeah, you understand, you didn't guess the opening, you continue pushing, mm -hmm. sort of, and when you realize, oh, okay, it's time yeah, to it it's time to solidify, <laughs> but it's, it's too late. It's, it's not there at yeah. all. Uh, in the interview, uh, if you missed it earlier, uh, let me just pull up that very moment that he, he that it, uh, spoke about, because he said he analyzed the game post-mortem, if you will with Hikaru and I think uh, with this move Hikaru uh, was optimistic because basically right about oops sorry this is not the the moment that I wanted to highlight uh, what I wanted I to highlight was you actually G right takes here H3, right? yes G takes H3 and what was a really cool line that we didn't look at we looked at the move Queen B8 which Hikaru and Vidit had pro both properly assessed. And we got here, and this is where Hikaru came up with something really creative. And it's like one of those moves, when you see it, you go, oh, I've just played the move bishop f4. I just played the move bishop f4. So you're not looking at moving the bishop again. But this was what Vidit said uh, Hikaru had been calcul calculating, pardon me, bishop takes e5, f4, and only when he was in studio with Begum did he say that the engine had suggested the remarkable move knight uh, g6. Here they were, they had been analyzing, uh, I think, h6. And Vidit was really surprised uh, when he saw after knight g6, black was winning. Was winning because both players had been calculating a perpetual check. Uh, based on queen g3 and queen h3 check. So that was, that was probably why Hikaru felt like, well, I can allow a perpetual check. Uh, right. Moro, I think, uh, 
judging by the fact that he didn't go for this line, he mm -hmm. that moment in the game he wouldn't be happy with a with a draw with a perpetual. Right. So the move he made instead of capturing the bishop, the knight c4 move, yes. which we know was a factum, was a mistake after right. which black is already better, but he mm -hmm. made it in order to play for a win, in order to avoid drawish lines. Right. And I just discovered that something very similar happened towards the end uh, in v Prague's game. Yeah? In Prague game against Vidit, because, we're, oh, sorry, against uh, uh, Gukesh. Gukesh, right. Because we believed that, yeah, Black always was winning and so on. And at some point, White just clearly had the perpetual and he was the one to decline it. In a couple of moves, he was lost. Wow. So, okay, we'll yeah, have to play is getting that ambitious. Uh, we've come to that uh, time in our broadcast where we like to check in uh, to our friends at QBoutiqueSTL.com, and we're going to do that right now as we have this very cool looking hip bag. Gear up in the newest apparel from the St. Louis Chess Club with the official branded hip bag, features of adjustable belt and chess club signature logos. All your shopping needs are available at QBoutiqueSTL.com. And uh, we are going to be taking a break. We'll see you on the other side of the break. No, pardon me, we're gonna go to Toronto. Excuse me. It's great to have you here in the studio. How are you feeling after your win uh, on the second round? Uh, I'm feeling good, of course, but a little bit exhausting game, yeah, and uh, I think it was very eventful and I could barely understand what's going on. I mean, uh, until I found, found out that, okay, wow, I have an extra rook. Uh, so, and even, even the conversion like, phase of, uh, uh, it, didn't, uh, it didn't look obvious to me, but uh, yeah, somehow I like, you know, crashed through and uh, yeah, that's good. Jan, you always somehow play the candidates tournament very well and you're always leading the tournament and qualify. How do you do that? Is there any, uh, anything special you do for this tournament? Well, I'm, I just try, yeah, <laughs> just try to play, but I think it's, uh, you know, this is not such relevant statistics and each tournament is unique and, uh, well, it's, it's good to have, like, some positive experience of previous editions yet. Uh, but once again, it's, like, different lineup, different different me as well, yeah, so I just, I, I try to do what I normally do, yeah. And do you have a special routine for this tournament or do you, are you doing something that will help you to uh, stay energized? Well, I'd say comparing with some like round robins, I think I do a lot more preparation. Uh, you know, of course, before the tournament and, and during the tournament. But uh, I think that's I think this could be said about every every player. So that's, I don't think there is some some secret ingredient. Yeah, so it's just mm -hmm. just do my job. Thank you so much, and good luck with your tournament. Thank you. Thank you, Begum. Uh, thank you, Jan, for sharing your thoughts. And let's just remind everybody what happened. Ev uh, two uh, eventful rounds, this round most especially, and the Open. Right, uh, today was a very fighting day. We had two wins with Black, Vidit defeated Hikaru, and Gukesh defeated Prague. And with White, Nepo won against Firuja, and Fabi against Abbasov. And in the ladies? And in the ladies, we had two wins with the white pieces, Tang defeated, defeated by Shali, and Karyachkina won against Muzichuk. The other two games ended in a draw. And let's talk about those standings. Let's start with the open standings. We have four co-leaders uh, with one and a half points. Fabiano Caruana, Yanni Pomnishi, Gukesh, and Vidit. And there's no one with 50%. <laughs> Everybody else is tied for fifth. <laughs> right. And for the lady standings. For the ladies, Tanjongi with a perfect score. Yourself. Two out of two. But closely following Alexandra Garyachkina with one and a half. Then we have three players with 50%, Hampi Conero, Katerina Lahno, and Nurgil Salimova. I can't help but shake the feeling that Alexandra's victory today is so impactful and so meaningful. But uh, before we end up uh, closing the show, first of all, let's go to, uh, back to Toronto for Begum for some final thoughts of a very eventful uh, round, Begum. Hello from Toronto. So 
this day was incredible. Uh, we had more decisive games than we expected. Now you saw the interview with Jan Nepomnyshi, who won his game against Alireza Firuza, and Fabiana Carvana also won his game against Nijat Abbaso with white pieces in a very good style. He always had a comfortable position, as he mentioned. He had a small opening preparation, which worked out well. And unfortunately, Hikaru Nakamura lost his game against Vidit. Vidit is playing a great tournament so far, and his original uh, preparation, bishop h3, and then yesterday his move, bishop g4. He, he has some good energy in this tournament, and we are hope, uh, hoping that Hikaru will come back tomorrow. In ladies' section, Dang Zongyi won her game again, and she's the solo leader of the tournament. It's an amazing day. It has been an amazing day, so we are looking forward to see more fighting games like this tomorrow on round three. Back to the studio. Thank you, Begum. And of course, we missed a little bit of the action today, and that's really, really unfortunate. We're going to change the show times. Instead of starting at 5 p.m. here in St. Louis time, we're going to move it backwards an hour, try to get you more action, more games. We're going to try to keep that three-hour broadcast window, but we will be starting at 4 o'clock, 4 p.m. tomorrow central time. And Miro, final thoughts, very eventful round, just as Begum um, said. Well. <laughs> <laughs> now, you can't really add much about the open tournament. Like mm. Four wins is very rare. Two wins with black in the same round is very rare. And it will be, starting from today, every next round, there'll be a lot of pressure on the players. Like, either you want to go back or you want to extend the lead. And this is, this is how it goes. For the women's tournament, Something that was highlighted by Yasa, yeah, of course, congrats to Tan on being on 100% score, but something that was highlighted by Yasa, I'd like to expand on this a little bit. Uh, well, Gerbiachkina beating Muzichuk, and I'm recalling like 10 years back, Muzichuk would be a contender and she would fight with uh, players present here. Conero would be one of the world top, you know. Mm -hmm. So, and Anna somehow cannot make it to the World Championship match. And maybe this result was, you know, maybe this result was once again as early in the tournament as it happened in the second mm -hmm. round. Maybe was once again very, well, it will be tough for her to come back. So that's what I'm saying. Absolutely, no question about it. And uh, if for a lot of the players that didn't survive today, I want to congratulate ourselves for having survived wow. a very eventful uh, round, uh, to be sure. Thank you all for joining us. Tell your friends where you're hanging out. And be sure to join us one hour earlier tomorrow as we'll bring you round three coverage of the candidates live from Toronto and from St. Louis. Good night. See you all tomorrow. This has been a presentation of the St. Louis Chess Club. Any reproduction or distribution of this content without the express written consent of the St. Louis Chess Club is prohibited.